<clears throat> Time for the rubber meets the road. Are you ready for some rubber to meet the road? Good. Be brave. And so what I mean is, I'm to the point now with this fine, fine hard maple bow, and I love me some hard maple. Love it. It's actually quite lightweight considering its stiffness and its ability to absorb compression. So I, I love it. <clears throat> There's a risk, you know, more so probably than working with a similar draw weight and draw length, everything being equal, red oak bow. But half of what I'm going to put on the back here, sinew. I had a question, do I sell sinew bowstrings? And I said I was going to make a video the next day kind of explaining it, but I have to say, no, I could. But what you need to do, if you're intending to use sinew bowstrings, is you need to know how they operate from beginning to the end. So maybe not using the short leg tendons, but make it easy on yourself. Try to find some elk back strap, and it's going to be expensive. Or, or American bison or buffalo back strap. And you don't have to have as many junctions and adding fibers. If you screw up, just take your string apart and start over again. It's not a one-way trip for sinew, even backing. It can be recycled. Recycle, reuse, repurpose. Okay, so got to this point and I like it and I actually did sinew backing so I can sand the sides down to give it more curve so the majority of tension will be up here supported by sinew without reducing the amount of wood that is in compression you know it's that whole I, I, I like crowned bows I cannot lie but before I get to bending gentle recurves in first I picked the, the jig I want to use and it's going to be all and not a recurve recurve just a gentle so swoopy and so this whole thing won't be engaged into a major recurve it's just give it a doink and then these tips will be bent up I love the the bent tab tips a la west coast native style and I guess explain a little bit how I do that after I recurve, I'm not going to bend them before I recurve. They are recurved. Get everything balanced as far as the degree of curviness in each side. Then I'm going to take it and I'm almost going to cut it, this little tab off, almost going to cut it through. And then take sandpaper and stick it in that groove I made, put pressure on it, pull the sandpaper, put the other sandy surface on that side, pull that. And it's going to make a V, which then I can steam this thing, bend it up, put some glue in there. And once the glue's dried, then I can go ahead and sinew it with reckless abandon. If you try this, you don't have to have the best joinery type of no space. And it doesn't matter because the sinew that goes over the top and around gives it all the strength. And so you could actually break these things off. And occasionally I do when I'm bending them up. Just glue them back on. The sinew will give them the strength. So don't worry about having perfect, perfect V or fish mouth or whatever you want to call it, groove to bend it up. It doesn't need to be perfect. I strive for perfection, but it's a first timer. Don't stress it. The sinew will get it. Anyway, I had to analyze it. And so I put a string on the back to see if the, it's all centered between the tip, tip, and handling it is. And so I don't need to worry about, instead of bending this handle to straighten it, you can do this by adding a little torsionally twist to steer it. You're steering these things. And if this was off to the side here, like this, instead of worrying about bending this, which I could, I could just take my recurve, and when I'm bending it, tip it this way a little bit. Just a little bit. It's a game of millimeters, a game of inches, less than an inch. Um, but you can steer it. Little side note, I was down there, and it's going to be finished tillered. It's going to be finished tillered, but speaking of steering things, if you look at it and you're getting a propeller twist, it's entirely possible that maybe 
you can thin one side more than the other to get that even bend on either side. Think of this as a grouping of fibers, not just one fiber. You can actually steer through tillering propeller twists out of stuff to some degree. But that's it. Um, I guess it's time to choose whether or not I'm going to steam it or boil it. Because you can see there's some snakes in here. I'm going to steam it. That way I can have pull the string off of here. If I can, if I could be so bold. Well, anyway. I'm going to steam it so I can have this on here while it's steaming. And it's important that I aim this so this thing is aimed at that tip. It can be somewhat deceptive when you're recurving and you've got some snakes, but the best way to take a snaky bow and make sure the recurve is good is to have this thing, I'm aiming it that way so everything is hunky-dory and straight and I don't throw the alignment off. Well, that's it. Last bit, patience. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna slip it on there, I'm gonna take a, a loose wrap of something, I don't know, maybe even uh, gauze or something. It needs to be wide and supported so I don't put a big dent in here from like a tight string. And then steam it, and then for a while, I'm just gonna steam it for like 25 minutes. And then push it to see if I have any resistance. If I've got resistance, too much experience, I'm not gonna put a, a bend in it. Cause here's what happens. You're recurving something. I've got some leeway because of the sinew. If you're recurving something and you don't have uh, suppleness in that bend, you might get a recurve, but it'll tend to pull off. You wanna make sure this is comfortable with recurving. And that's why I'm very gentle when I do this and I don't force it. I have to talk to the bow, are you willing to bend now? And if it answers me in its own little wooden way, I will recurve it only when it's ready. Um, and then my chances of it, if it wasn't being sinew backed, chances of it pulling out are a little less. That speaks to something else. Tillering changes when you recurve. So why not leave the ends slightly on the heavy side so then you recurve it and then you thin this out and so you've got more wood where the recurve is. It's a little thicker up here than it is down in the bendy portion. So things to think about. Anyway, have a good one. Appreciate watching. Hopefully you got something from this. I like that when it's straight through. It's like, yeah, I haven't screwed up yet. <laughs>